Greetings and welcome to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers. I'm here with a very special guest who I really want to take the time to introduce you to, Rob Zins. Rob, great to have you here, brother. Thank you, Larry. Good to be here again yes. with you. Now, a lot of people don't really know who you are, although I know I've known you for decades. But uh, just to let our YouTube viewers out there get a good idea who you are, I'd like you to take some time and explain the books you have written. Now, you are a former Roman Catholic, yet you graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary. Right. In fact, I think your, uh, your degree is in history. Historical Tur theology, right. Historical theology. So uh, with that said, and for the sake of our viewers who don't really know who you are, and there's going to be a lot of people like that, <laughs> I'd like you to kind of begin with some of the books you've written, some of the pamphlets, things that talk about your ministry, mm -hmm. maybe your website, and then I'll just throw in my two cents worth whenever I get a chance. Okay. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Larry. It's good to be here. Actually, after graduating from Dallas Seminary, it was my intention to go into the pastoral ministry and to become involved in local church work, which I think is probably what most of the uh, men who graduate from seminary want to do. But having been in the pastoral ministry for several years and, and having uh, come to some uh, idea through my studies about the Great Protestant Reformation, I was concerned a little bit about the uh, disposition of evangelicals toward the Roman Catholic religion. Now, I was raised in the Roman Catholic religion and and, and went through catechism and confirmation and so forth. But uh, I, I left the Roman Catholic religion and was kind of free-floating and uh, ultimately came to Christ through reading the scriptures and, and having been witnessed to by some Christians uh, a little bit later on in life. And uh, after going to seminary and being a part of the pastoral ministry, I began to notice that there was a shift taking place in our nation that more and more evangelicals, more and more articles and books were written uh, favoring the Roman Catholic religion and sort of building this large tent and including not only Roman Catholicism but a number of other non-Christian religions under this tent. So I began looking around for books that may address this issue and there weren't too many books out there. And I came across one book in particular written in the early 50s by a man named Lorraine Bettner. And at that time, Dr. Bettner had written a standard work on the Roman Catholic religion, but it was outdated. And along about that same time, a Roman Catholic writer wrote a book, an apologetic book, wherein he set about to do what uh, the book says, debunk Lorraine Bettner. In other words, to disprove all that Lorraine Bettner was saying about the Roman Catholic religion. You're so, talking about Carl Keating? Carl Keating, right. Mm. Carl Keating's book. So I read Keating's book uh, and, and read Bettner's book again, and I, I asked the question almost out loud, has anybody answered Keating? Now, he started Catholic Answers. He did. He started Catholic Answers in San Diego, and no one at that time had given a direct answer to Carl Keating. So I decided, well, Let's give it a try. And that's when I wrote my, uh, my very first book. And this book is entitled Romanism, The Relentless Roman Catholic Assault on the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it's a long title, Romanism, The Relentless Roman Catholic Assault on the Gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's a purposeful title. This book goes through every single chapter of Carl Keating's work and analyzes the Roman Catholic position on virtually every aspect of their religion. We have in this book a chapter on baptism, penance, purgatory, the Eucharist, the Mass, the place of Peter invoking the dead, Mary, justification, the so-called charge of professional anti-Catholics, and a final chapter on the changing face of Rome due to Vatican II. So this book was written in response to a very strong Roman Catholic writer. Mm -hmm. And that actually began the ball rolling to have a, a more full-orbed, ongoing ministry to the Roman Catholic mm -hmm. community. But, as you know, in 1994, a statement came out called ECT, Evangelicals and Catholics Together, where a number of prominent evangelicals actually signed a document essentially endorsing the Roman Catholic religion. This document came as quite a shock to the evangelical community. It still has a rippling effect to our day, 
And I think I, it was signed by like Bill Bright of Bill Bright, Campus Crusade, Campus Crusade uh, J.I. Packer, J. I. Packer uh, um, a number of people. And that led me to write my second book. My second book is entitled On the Edge of Apostasy, subtitled The Evangelical Romance with Rome. This book is extremely important because we analyze the modern evangelical thought patterns mm -hmm. of those who would want to convince us that the Roman Catholic religion is just another branch or form of Christianity. And uh, did a lot of research, it's well footnoted, and uh, I, I just spent a lot of time trying to answer the question, why would evangelicals ever think that the Roman Catholic religion is in fact a Christian religion and should be considered as an alternative worshiping community to Christianity? And Having written this book, I got into all kinds of trouble because uh, it flies in the face of the modern uh, thinking mm -hmm. of ecumenism. Mm -hmm. So this deals with the ecumenical movement and a number of broad organizations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have it available for you on a number of okay, various websites. Uh, could you briefly right. mention a few of your other references before we... Yes, we realize that a lot of people don't like to read long books, so we've written <laughs> short books. And this book that right here is a, a book that we've sent all over the world. It's entitled Salvation by Grace Through Faith Alone or by Grace Through Sacraments. And this is a very uh, concise analysis of the Roman Catholic sacramental system. And it's not too hard to read, it's not too long, it's direct, and we think we hit the point very well. But for those who like to read booklets, <laughs> we have written a tiny little booklet that we do send out a lot. It's called I'm a Christian, you are a Roman Catholic, so what is the big deal? And this also has been translated into Spanish as well. And uh, I like to remind you that, that we do send these booklets over to Spanish speaking nations and people. In fact, we made, a, we made a Spanish video yeah. out of that, and it is yeah, on it. YouTube. Yeah, it it is is on the YouTube. audio is on YouTube. Right. So between the, the larger works, the medium works, and the smaller works, this is a sampling of the kinds of things that we use uh, to help Roman Catholics understand their own religion and also to help evangelicals understand the Roman Catholic religion. And in doing so, I think you'll, you'll have to agree at the end of the day that the Roman Catholic religion is a religion unto itself and uh, uses in some cases many Christian terms but defines them with a completely non-Christian dictionary. That's the way well, I like to say it. I would like to mention also that uh, for those of you out there that uh, may not be familiar with our, uh, uh, our YouTube channel page, See Answers TV, you're seeing it right now on your screen. But uh, you may not have noticed that if you look at our channel page and you go down a little bit, on the page you'll find that we list several websites, BibleQuery.org, MuslimHope.com, uh, HistoryCart.com, BereanBeacon.org, PilgrimPublications.com. And then there's one right under, after that called CWRC-RZ.org. Now, does that sound familiar to you, Rob? It certainly does. That's our website, uh, Larry, CWRC-RZ.org. And if you come to our website and scroll through it, there are tons of articles and information on how you can get these books and pamphlets and We'd uh, love to hear from you. You can email me and uh, order anything you want off the website. Yeah, I'd also like to mention to our viewers that if you're on our channel page, you'll notice we have 19 playlists that go down the right-hand side of the page on all kinds of subjects. Third one down is on Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and, and uh, Seventh-day Adventists and so forth. But as you get way down in there, you, you find Roman Catholicism. As you're seeing on the screen, this is our playlist on Roman Catholicism. At the time we did this video, it was we had 79 videos. We've got more now, but uh, by the time you're seeing this, but uh, as you're looking at this, uh, you see that we have uh, all these videos, and Rob is in quite a few of these videos. Mm. Rob, as the people are looking at this, they they see here that uh, there's a Boston College debate, and what happened in that particular video, for instance? Well, the Boston College debate was a, a debate that uh, centered around the authority of the Pope at Rome. Essentially, it was our duty and, and privilege to debate two Roman Catholic scholars on stage at Boston College, and they presented the Roman Catholic uh, persuasion on the Pope at Rome, who's considered in their religion to be the vicar of Christ on earth, and 
we did everything we could to refute their understanding and also to present the, the biblical Christian understanding of the person of Peter. So that, that's the, the very kind of thing that we do, and we have it on videotape. And anybody who's interested in the difference between what a Roman Catholic scholar would present about their own religion and about the Pope at Rome, and the contrasting view, the antithetical view, actually the opposite view of biblical Christianity, that would be a good debate to watch. Right, and I wanted to mention on our playlist, we have our 16-hour video series with Rob and me that we did like 20 years ago. Right. Uh, but that covers a, the, the whole orb of all the teachings and doctrines of the Roman Catholic religion and then we've got all kinds of other videos that Rob and me have done as well your debate with the Monsignor right for instance that was most interesting he was basically saying you can believe anything yeah. and it doesn't really matter I'm letting uh, everyone know that we have many many videos one last thing I want to say is if you type Rob Zins that's R-O-B-Z-I-N-S into the YouTube search box you'll get a whole plethora of Rob Zins videos that are available on YouTube and if you were to type Rob Zinn's Romanism, once again, you'll get even more Rob Zinn's videos <laughs> in a plethora of uh, videos available. And as you can see these things, there's just some samples there on your screen. But uh, with that said, we just wanted to call your attention to all the resources that are available through this brother in Christ here, former Roman Catholic, who was saved by a supernatural act of God. That's really the difference in... A real Christian who has been born again, John 3, 3 through 8, through a work of the, the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit over just getting baptized or, or doing all these sacraments or things of that nature. We're talking about what makes you a real Christian is a supernatural act of God mm -hmm. on your behalf where before you were dead in your sins and trespasses, yeah. behold, now you're alive in Christ. And that's really what changed your life. Amen. All right, brother, with that said, uh, we're going to go into, this is just a promo leading into a main video. So uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, little information uh, situation for discussing Rob. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video to come. God bless you all. Adam was a super being when God created him. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether people even know this, but he was the first superman that really ever lived. <laughs> first of all, the scriptures declare clearly that he had dominion over the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, which mm -hmm. means he used to fly. Whoa. Well, of course, how can you have dominion over the birds and not be able to do what they do? Whoa. <laughs> Actually, I mean, the, wait a minute. I, Wait, I'll prove it to you. Wait a minute, <laughs> Danny. I've never heard that. The word have, dominion yes. in the Hebrew clearly declares that if you have dominion over a subject, that you do everything that subject does. In other words, that subject, if it does something you, you cannot do, you don't have dominion over it. I'll prove it further. Adam not only flew, he flew to space. He used to be, he, 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 he was with... One thought he'd be on the moon. Ladies and gentlemen, are you here to learn? And you sit there and don't think about your chicken and about your roast and about your spaghetti. Anything else, put it all out of the way right now. This is life to us. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person and he is a triune being by himself. 
separate from the Son and the Holy Ghost. So what did you say? Hear it, hear it, hear it. See, God the Father is a person. God the Son is a person. God the Holy Ghost is a person. But each one of them is a triune being by himself. If I can shock you, and maybe I should, there's nine of them. <gasps> what did you say? Let me explain. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person with his own personal spirit, with his own personal soul, and his own personal spirit body. You say, oh, I never heard that. But you think you're in this church to hear things you heard for the last 50 years? Faith didn't come billowing out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of the heart of a being that is very uncanny the way he's very much like you and me. A being that stands somewhere around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of hundred pounds, a little better, has a span of eight and, I mean, nine inches across, stood up and said, Light be! And this universe situated itself and went into motion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's reason for creating Adam was his desire to reproduce himself. I mean a reproduction of himself. And in the Garden of Eden, he did that. He was not a little like God. He was not almost like God. He was not uh, subordinate to God even. And Adam is as much like God as you could get. Just the same as Jesus, when he came into the earth, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He wasn't a lot like God. He's God manifested in the flesh. And I want you to know something. Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifested in the flesh. God, the Father, cannot do anything in this earth realm without permission. Jeremiah, prophet of Israel, had this to say about the false prophets who were leading his people astray. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation saith the Lord. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, he shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten me my name for Baal. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, 
and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord, of host, our God. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you in the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten. Greetings and welcome once again to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, your host, and I want to thank you for being here for another episode of Christian Answers Presents. I'm uh, the director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministry. And I'm here in studio with a very special guest and a good friend of mine, Rob Zins. Rob, great to have you here, brother. Thank you. Mate. Good to be here. Yes. As uh, we explained, uh, this is part three of our charismatic, charismatic and Pentecostal series, you might call it. Uh, eventually, when I finally put it up on YouTube, I'll probably come up with some... Uh, title for it, but for now we'll just call it that. And uh, anyway, I w as we did in show number one, for any new viewers that aren't familiar with who you are, I would like you to just give a real brief introduction to yourself, and we'll get right back into what we were talking about in show number one in this Charismatic Pentecostal series. Right. Well, normally, Larry, I would be talking with you at great length about the Roman Catholic religion, because that's the field of expertise, and where the Lord has led me to do most of my research and writing, but I do think that these videos on the charismatic movement, the Pentecostal movement, and the use of scripture has a, a, a tangential touch base with the Roman Catholic religion as well, because at the end of the day, we're talking about what does the scripture say, how does the Bible define these terms, and, and how are the purveyors of false religions using the Bible to somehow validate and substantiate their particular brand of religion. So whether it's the Roman Catholic religion, the Mormon religion, or a non-so-called uh, uh, non-Christian, totally secular religion, most of them some way, somehow manipulate the scriptures and kind of bring into play that the Bible might actually teach some of this stuff. I know that the Roman Catholic religion has a Bible verse for everything they believe, but the, it's Bible verses that do not substantiate what they believe, but they do take the verses and they try to build a platform underneath their belief system. And I think, if I'm not wrong on this, that the Pentecostal charismatic movement, they are going to camp out in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. beginning with Acts chapter 2, then they're going to camp out in 1 Corinthians, and then they're going to make the claim that certain gifts given to the body of Christ are still with us today. And if I'm not mistaken, Larry, the, the Pentecostal charismatic movement really wants to zero in on the gift of prophecy and the gift of apostleship. And tongues. And tongues. Well, tongues, tongues have been with us for a long time with this charismatic movement. And uh, we, we sort of, I don't want to say got used to it, but... We, roll your eyes after a while for everybody who's saying that tongues is evidence of the second blessing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's their mantra, mm -hmm. and tons have been written to to refute that sort of thing, and I think you probably have a We're, We'll be getting on. into all that. Yeah. We're going to get into quite a bit of history. But this idea that we have today modern apostles mm -hmm. with the same kinds of authority, the same kinds of... Uh, Holy Spirit led inroads to the special council of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. this, the same kinds of, um, of uh, claims for leadership and authority that mm -hmm. the uh, original apostles had, 
This, I think, is a movement that is now springing up all over the world, not just our nation. Mm -hmm. So modern apostles, modern prophets, yes, they are speaking in tongues. Yes, they do claim the gift of speaking in tongues. Yes, they, they, they are involved in that sort of thing. But what's new, I think, and what's different, what caused John MacArthur to write his book, Strange Fire, is that these guys are actually saying that they are from a direct line of the apostles of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And if they had apostles then, we need apostles now. And they're saying, when we speak, we're speaking directly from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, they're saying that we speak scripture. That's right. And that's the danger. And of course, we want to talk about that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that was a good introduction. In fact, uh, your introduction was so good, Rob, that you actually changed the way I was going to do this particular episode. Okay. I'm going right. to tie it more into what you just said because yeah. I have the material for it. Right. And, uh, and then uh, we'll just proceed from there. Now, as we, we promised from before, I'm going to pick up where we left off from the first episode that we've already completed. So if you missed that, go back and uh, look it up on YouTube and check that first show, which will match the, pretty much the same uh, title that this one has in the series and you should be able to find it. And of course, it'll also be in our playlist uh, called uh, Dealing with Phony TV Preachers <laughs> from TBN yeah. and so forth, uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network. Uh, so and so th check that out. There's a lot of very good information in there. Uh, all right, with that said, I want to pick up sort of where we left off. I'm going to tie something else we were saying before into it, and I just mentioned Trinity Broadcasting Network. As you can see on your screen here, I've got Trinity Broadcasting Network founder, Paul Crouch, dead at 79. You can see his picture there. Minister and wife, Jan, built TBN into world's most widely distributed Christian TV network. And you've got the reference here of what's going on. And it says down at the bottom there, Paul Crouch, a pioneering televangelist and founder of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, died Saturday. He was 79 and had been in failing health. TBN has endured since its founding in 1973 and remains one of the world's most widely distributed Christian television networks with an expansive lineup of programs and personalities. It also has offshoots in Latin America, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. According to TBN, Crouch got his start broadcasting after helping to build a radio station while a student at Central Bible Institute and Seminary in Springfield, Missouri. He became a radio announcer in Rapid City, South Dakota in the late 1950s and served as a GM of the city's NBC affiliate station, KRSD-TV. As you see from this chart, televangelism powerhouse swamped by scandal. And there's a picture of Paul Crouch again. The Crouches, we need every cent you can spare for our garish clothes <laughs> and silly. Oh, so that must be a that must be a cut line that somebody put with this article. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that until I read it. Yeah, uh, but in they're a, cutting in a, them up. In a, in a sense, yeah. it's, it's pretty much true. Uh, we need every cent you can spare for our garish clothes and silly hairdos. But anyway, uh, to to tell you the truth, this particular article came from an atheist outfit. And now on show number one of this series, Rob, you had mm -hmm. actually mentioned that, uh, in, I don't know if I can uh, paraphrase you exactly right, but uh, you are basically saying these, these, these uh, charismatics, TV evangelists, Pentecostals, these types that we're seeing on the airways, much like the, the, uh, the, the, the crouches here, uh, are actually helping people lose their faith and actually almost promoting atheism by the nonsense that, that they're, they're showing people to be Christianity. Right. And uh, I actually picked up this, this article off the Internet uh, from The Freethinker, which is an atheist organization. But now this gives us a good insight into how what you said in show number one actually ties into 
the impact it has on these other guys and what mm -hmm. they think Christianity is. Right. Yeah. And, and so yeah. I thought this article here was useful because what they're saying here is the world's biggest Christian broadcasting network, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, founded by Paul and Jan Crouch, has been hit by a lawsuit from Crouch family members alleging widespread embezzlement plus allegations of spending uh, by the ministry that helped cover up sexual scandals in a discrimination lawsuit. Allegations include the cover-up and destruction of evidence concerning a bloody sexual assault involving TBN and affiliate Holy Land Experience employees, the cover-up mm -hmm. of director Janice Crouch's affair with a staff member at the Holy Land Experience, and the cover-up of, of director Paul Crouch's use of TBN funds to pay for a legal settlement with Enoch Lonnie Ford, a former TBN employee who said he had a homosexual affair with Paul Crouch. Mm. And it goes on to get into all these allegations. Uh, they even have had uh, trouble with their own granddaughter mm. in, with all these scandals. You can kind of see it there on your screen. So Rob, I just mentioned that because in a short, quick way, it kind of got into what the atheists are saying about, but all that information has already been all over the regular news. Christian publications have talked about it. Uh, the, you know, the homosexual affair of Paul Crouch and you know, he paid $450,000 to cover up his affair with that, that uh, male prostitute uh, and, and things of that nature. Of course, you know, you think of Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> being caught yeah. with the prostitutes and all that kind of stuff uh, already documented. Well, this, this was in a short way. Just kind of, We were talking in show number one of this series about the deaths of Bob Jones mm -hmm. and some of these uh, other uh, uh, prophets and apostles that you just mentioned a while ago in the opening uh, and how they died or passed away. Uh, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I think this is a, a good point where when you think about it, when you're talking about the word faith message about healing and God wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise, and uh, God will heal you of all this. And Benny Hinn has a, a book out where he says that you're never supposed to be ill for any reason. Mm. You know, that God promises to heal every illness. And they misquote passages out of, out of Isaiah, you, you know, or, or all your afflictions and everything else. Uh, and take some other passages like you were mentioning right. and, and try to say you're always healed of every disease. Mm -hmm. How physically sick modern healers get. These healers seek medical attention on a regular basis, not only for themselves, but for their families. It is one of the best kept secrets, but it is now leaking out. In a report entitled, It's Not Working for Them Either, they chronicled the deaths of John Wimber and his son Chris, both who died of cancer, Power evangelists, miracle workers, healers, both dying of cancer. E.W. Kenyon died in a coma with a malignant tumor. John Osting sought medical help for his wife Dodie's cancer. Bob Harrison died of cancer. Fred Price sought chemotherapy for his wife. He did not name it and claim it. He got the best physicians that he could find. Jamie Buckingham died of cancer. Charles Capp's wife got medical treatment for cancer, as did Joyce Meyer, who's had a mastectomy. She did not name it or claim it. Mac Timberlake sought medical attention for throat cancer. R.W. Schambach, who tells his people, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Schambach went and got a four-way bypass in a hospital. Prophet Keith Grayton died of AIDS. Kenneth Hagen's sister died of cancer. Hagen's wife has been under major surgery, and Hagen wears glasses. And you can begin to see the hypocrisy of it all. The list goes on and on. Catherine Coleman died of heart disease. A.A. A. Allen died from alcohol abuse and cirrhosis of the liver. Amy Semple McPherson died from an overdose of barbiturates. John Lake died of a stroke. Gordon Lindsay of heart condition. How do we explain all this when these men and these women claim healing powers and special visitations from God and from Jesus himself and from angels? Are they self-deluded? Or are they just deluding others? Or perhaps both? 
we just heard about all these TV preachers that say God never wants you, uh, you know, having any illness or if you got an earache or any of these these problems. I think it, I do find it interesting that they're always talking about miracle healings and stuff, but uh, you never find uh, the kind of miracles that they do matching off what the, the Bible miracles are. Right. Uh, you know, if, if someone comes in without an arm, you don't see their arm suddenly, or, or a, a leper uh, suddenly heal the leprosy. You don't see miracles like that. You know, it's always, oh, he, my, my lumbago has been healed. Right, you know, right. I, I remember Pat Robertson's famous for closing his eyes and holding his hat, hand out for the TV on his 700 Club. And he's saying, well, somewhere out there has a terrible back problem. Their back is aching, and God is going to heal that right now, right now. You know, but now when you think about the statistics of people with back problems, do you think there's a good probability there's a lot of people out there watching millions of people on TV that might have back problems? Every golfer I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think the I think the irony of it all is after we just heard about all these TV evangelists dying of either you know old age or heart failure mm -hmm. we just saw about uh, paul crouch dying of tbn and all this uh, what do you have to say what does that really say about the hypocrisy of this whole word faith message that we're being given i i just think it's such a horrendous misrepresentation of scripture and because it's a misrepresentation of scripture it is a misrepresentation of the gospel and of the person and work of Jesus Christ and the Trinity, the triune God that we worship. And if you put it all together, you, you just have uh, religious organizations that are, are, are just absolutely twisting scriptures and mangling the scriptures and putting them back together in weird sorts of way to say things that are not true and to, to hype and build up people for for their own purposes, and as you say, uh, I've, I've, I haven't read extensively on this, but I've read enough to know that if you give to these ministries, the expectation is that God's going to bless you and you'll get more. Give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken out. They've got a Bible verse for everything. And, oh, by the and, way, the one you just said, Pat Robertson likes to say that one a lot. I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Um, uh, so... You, 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 you think of the movement and you think of the people who are involved and then you find out that people do give money, but all of a sudden they realize they're not being blessed, they do lose their jobs, they, they lose their houses, they can't pay their mortgage, and they think, oh, wh where's the blessing? And, and the, the, the head of the religious organization, I can't call it Christianity, because it's not Christianity, right. it's a religious organization, says, well, your faith probably wasn't enough. I mean, they you gave the money, but if you had more faith, you see, somewhere along the way you goofed up and you didn't have enough faith. Faith, if it's as big as a mustard seed, will work wonders. I mean, you can move mountains, I'm telling you, but evidently you don't have that kind of faith. So don't blame us. Don't blame God. Go back to your prayer closet and blame yourself because you don't have enough faith. So they get them running in both directions, mm -hmm. and, and the whole thing is hokey. It, it, it's... It's just terrible, but it goes to the point, Larry, I think that we've been making in the first video and in this video. Even the passage of Scripture that you talked about that was used by the Lord in your conversion experience, mm -hmm. reading that passage of Scripture, right. at the end of it, holding to a form of godliness but denying the That's power. Right. Okay, you look at that passage and you say, Man, that's me. I hold to a form of godliness, right. but I deny the power, meaning, of course, that I, de I deny that, that really there is a God and that he's worthy of worship and that he's the, the, the powerful one and only true God. I've been using my religion that. to hide yeah. from God. Yes, I yes. was using my religion to hide from him, exactly. not know him. But, but okay, so, so the charismatic, the Pentecostal guy comes along and he sees that verse. And he says, holding to a form of godliness, but denying the power, that's your problem. 
You deny the power of the Holy Spirit. You deny the power of the Spirit of God that could work wonders in you. And you better get on the train. You better get on the river. And I'm starting to shake now. And Holy Spirit, come upon us. And we're not going to deny your power. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And the Holy Spirit. And they take off on that verse, you see. So here we have a classic example, I think, of what goes on in religious organizations. They tee off on a verse or two, and they make outlandish interpretations and applications from what they're teeing off on. Mm -hmm. So if I were to say to the religious leaders who are propagating this sort of thing out there on the airwaves mm -hmm. and television shows and everything, I, I would say, uh, you're wrong. You're, you're absolutely in a bizarre world of your own making, and it's a religious show. It has nothing to do with the gospel. They would be able to take that criticism and turn it around and say, we're nothing more than fools for Christ. Mm. And we, folks, we can all expect people to say these bad things about us because, after all, we are fools for Christ. And what did the Apostle Paul say? Why, we are the last in line. People will hate us. People will cast insults against us. But don't let that change your mind because we have the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't matter what you say. Right. They're teeing off mm -hmm. on Bible passages. Mm -hmm. And they're putting them together in strange, fantastic ways. They're twisting the scripture much like St. Peter said yeah. in uh, 2 Peter chapter two or chapter 3, verse 16 where he talked about people who pervert and twist the scriptures, those things that are hard to understand right. by Paul. Now, I just want to take a moment here for, this, for the sake of the audience and say, look, this is nothing new. There is nothing new under the sun. The apostle Paul was an apostle. We take it through his own testimony and through the testimony of others who sat under his ministry, the churches that he planted, and every inch of what he wrote in the New Testament, that he was a valid apostle, that he had been called by Christ for the purposes of presenting the gospel of the grace of God, and he is for real. He is an apostle, okay? But what did he spend most of his time doing in his lifetime? Fending off false religions, false gospels, and false prophets. Listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I just want to read this for you. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, But what I am doing, I will continue to do, that I may cut off opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which they are boasting. For such men are false apostles deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So, the Apostle Paul, the genuine apostle, the genuine article as it is, has to write a letter to the church at Corinth, and he's saying, how long are you going to put up with these guys? I'm telling you, they're false apostles. They're deceitful workers. They disguise themselves as apostles of Christ, but they're not for real. So fast forward to the 21st century. We're sitting here and we're saying, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and a whole array of others, you're not real apostles. You're false apostles. And anybody that's following you is following somebody who's disguised himself as an apostle, just as satanic as any other false apostle who would disguise himself as an angel of light. And the guy sitting out there is saying, well, Zins, pretty strong accusation. Mm -hmm. Wessels, you talk big. Why should I believe you? Maybe you're the false apostle, mm -hmm. and maybe him and this other guy over here, this Copeland guy, maybe he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. He's been telling us for years that he is the real deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now how are we going to decide? Well, that's a good question. I asked the Apostle Paul the same question. <laughs> I said, you're calling yourself an apostle, mm -hmm. And, and what if the Corinthians wrote a letter back to you and said, hey, who do you think you are? We've got some guys over here that know a lot about Scripture too, and you're telling us that they're phony baloney. What makes you think that you are the real deal? Mm -hmm. 
And the Apostle Paul over and over and over again says the same thing. What does the Word of God say? Mm -hmm. That's the measure. That's the measure. Mm -hmm. And he constantly exhorted them to take on board the Word of God. He constantly exhorted He did defend himself. He said, I believe with all my heart that God called me to this ministry and that he gave me insight into his gospel and it was accepted at Jerusalem by the other apostles who walked with Jesus Christ and learned their ministry from him. I am the least of all the apostles, but I am not inferior to any of them. And he explains his conversion testimony. And hey, you can either believe the apostle Paul or not. And Larry, sometimes it comes down to this. Mm -hmm. It comes down to this. If the apostle Paul is a true apostle, then his writings are true. That's right. They're and inspired his, scripture. And his writings absolutely destroy him and Copeland and all these other guys claiming to be That's right. the real deal. And the Peter himself said Paul was an apostle. Yeah. Second Peter chapter three, verse sixteen. Oh. And then and then like you said, Acts seventeen, yeah. it says the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians because they searched the scriptures daily. Yeah. To see if what the things Paul said were true. Yeah. But see, these Pentecostals and Charismatics, they don't search the scriptures daily. They just take what these clowns are saying. Right. You mentioned that a lot of this is circus, so I just figured yeah. I'd ought to throw in Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, that, that works. <laughs> now look, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. John writes these words I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance that you cannot endure evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. I put this to you. That's the responsible of every, responsibility of every Christian. You put them to the test to see whether or not they are true. And the only test we have is the New Testament the writings of the Apostle Paul, and the other writings inspired by God in the New Testament. We put that to the test. Are these guys for real? And every time we measure what Copeland and, and Hinn and these other guys are saying against the Bible, they come up absolutely as false prophets. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. That's what we're saying here. And it's difficult, isn't it? Because we're, we're, we're trying to protect the integrity of the word apostle while at the same time exposing false apostles. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the, the work of every Christian apologist and every pastor, every teacher, every, every Sunday school teacher, and, and really every Christian to do this kind of work. Okay, now these phony charismatic and Pentecostal leaders, as you've been mentioning, uh, so often say, well, if you don't get healed and we just saw how they all died just like yeah. any other man they, they're they're gonna we're all gonna end up in the grave no one's gonna get away you yeah. know uh, it's it's gonna happen it's you know we're sinners and we're gonna die because of our sins yeah you know and so we know we're not gonna be on this planet all that long and even those guys know it and we're gonna see a quote later in this series where even him knows it yeah I'm gonna give you a quote that maybe a lot of his own followers don't know <laughs> but yeah, the Apostle Paul says to Timothy if you're sick take a little bit of wine right, for your right, stomach right yeah he says in in my ministry I have been given I have been given a thorn in the flesh that's right and and it is, it is for the sake of my humility uh, on a number of occasions, he had to leave people sick behind. Well, see, we've got a whole video that I mentioned yeah. in, the show, in series number one of this series. Uh, I mentioned how we've got a, a, a playlist with our uh, phony word faith yeah. teachers. And people can go to that playlist on our YouTube channel, See Answers TV. And show number five, show number five of our five-hour in-depth biblical analysis of these, these word faith false prophets. Mm -hmm is all about what you were just talking about. Right. It gets into exactly, what you, but it's a whole hour of documented information showing that those guys are giving you a line of bull when it comes to this stuff about not having enough faith, for instance. Right. When you look in the New Testament 
And you find that the apostles come back to Jesus, or the, back then they were the disciples before they were apostles. Mm -hmm. uh, but the disciples come back to Jesus and they say, well, well we couldn't get, we, could, we couldn't get the, the, the demon out of him, you know. And then Jesus says, ye of little faith. And as when we get to uh, John MacArthur's book, he's gonna, we're going to get some other scriptures as well. But we're going to find out that the reason people weren't exercising demons or, or something else, it wasn't the faith of the person because most of the people getting healed in the Bible had no faith. Right. You got those ten lepers. Right. Only one right. of the ten came. A lot of them didn't even know who he was. Uh, and, and they had no faith to begin with. And some of these people were dead. The right. little girl, right. how's she going to have any faith? She's raised from the dead by Jesus. She's right. dead. Yeah. How, do you, how do you have faith when you're dead? Uh, you yeah, know, if only Lazarus, she had more faith. Yeah, only Lazarus yeah had but more see, faith. these false prophets don't tell you any of those kind of miracles right. and healings. They, they want you to think, oh, it's you. You don't have enough faith. Right. But, but the scripture says in these miraculous miracles and raising from the dead, they, it did, faith was not required because the faith was on the one doing the miracles. The, Jesus condemned his own disciples for not having enough faith when it came to not casting a demon out. Right. A, see, the healer is the one who has the faith. So, not the not so, the ones receiving. So what you're saying, if if Copeland and Hen and their ilk, if they had more faith, everybody would they, be healed and raised from the dead. Put it on them. Put it <laughs> but on see, them. See, they don't tell you that. Yeah, yeah. They, see, that's the trick. It's like when they're saying, "Give give me a thousand dollars," so like Robert Tilton or something. Mm -hmm. Give me a a thousand dollars, so God will give you ten thousand. You know, God will bless you by you giving me the sea faith, like Oral Roberts would say, or any of these guys. Uh, give me that money and then God will give you all these blessings. But see, if they took that to its logical conclusion and you get 10 times what you give, well then why doesn't Oral Roberts give you $1,000 or Benny Hinn give you $5,000 or Robert Tilton give you $10,000? They'd be so he, a lot faster, wouldn't they? See, so that way God could give them all this money for giving you money. Right. See, but no one thinks about that either, do no, they? No. You know, everybody asks you, say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? <laughs> he's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. We're going to sign off for now. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, tune, us in, tune in again next time for the next episode in this series. Uh, I'm Larry Wessels with Christian Answers. Rob Zins with a Christian witness to Roman Catholicism. I got it right. Dude. Very and, good. And uh, just remember this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. That's John 14, 6. And you only find a Jesus like that in the Word of God. Don't trust in these TV preachers or a charismatic feeling or, or speaking in tongues. or Trust the Word of God alone. Trust Christ alone in the Word of God alone, and you'll have the right Jesus. All right, with that, God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater. And I'd like to let you know that free newsletters are available from our ministry. Just email us at cdebater at aol.com and give us your mailing address and we'll mail them out to you for free. You can also call us at 512-218-8022 and leave your address there. You can also access all our newsletters online by going to one of our three websites called BibleQuery.org. 
Once on the home page, simply click on the experience box and then scroll down to the newsletter section as shown here. Since our number one most watched video of the over 548 videos we have produced for YouTube at the time of this recording is Unpopular Bible Doctrines number one, The Biblical God No One Wants to Know, with over 433,000 viewings, our latest newsletter is called Unpopular Topic, How Sovereign is God? Our second most viewed YouTube video is Six-Year-Old Wife of Muhammad Was Okay by the Muslim God Allah, But Not by the Biblical God of Jesus, with over 341,000 viewings. We also have three newsletters available on Islam. Our video, Debate, Larry Wessels versus Two Jehovah's Witnesses at a University Study Center, currently has close to 150,000 views. See our newsletter on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses, Deceive Deceivers. Our video, Is Jesus God Almighty in the Flesh, Meaning the Second Person of the Trinity, or Is He Something Else, has over 101,000 viewings. See our newsletter, Testimony to the Eternal Godhead, the Trinity. Our video, Biography, the famous 19th century Prince of Preachers, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a man of God, has close to 89,000 views. See two of our newsletters with lead articles from sermons by Spurgeon. Our video, UFOs, Ancient Aliens or Beings of the Fourth Dimension, number one, fact or fiction, has over 207,000 viewings. Not only do UFOs and the occult use the same disciplines, such as levitation, teleportation of objects, psychokinesis, clairvoyance, automatic writing, and telepathy, but their theologies are completely foreign to biblical Christianity. UFO theologies include everything from reincarnation and evolution to man achieving cosmic godhood, but they do not include Jesus Christ as the only mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. We have two newsletters related to the world of the occult to which UFOs are a part. Our video, Former Roman Catholic Bride of Christ Nun Testifies of Abnormal Life in the Convent, has over 67,000 viewings. Our video featuring former Roman Catholic Rob Zins, who has a Master of Theology from Dallas Theological Seminary, historical split between Roman Catholicism and the Christ of the Scripture, man's word or God's word, has over 53,000 viewings. See our two newsletters on the subject of Roman Catholicism. Our video, Cult of Ellen G. White, number one, Beginnings of the 19th century religion called Seventh-day Adventism has over 48,000 viewings and features former Seventh-day Adventist Wallace Slattery, who has 44 years experience with this religion. Our playlist called Dealing with Seventh-day Adventism and Their Prophetess features 15 videos with 14 hours of material. See our newsletter, Seventh-day Adventism, True or False. For theological music lovers, see our video, Favorite Old-Time Christian Bluegrass Gospel Music, Psalm 98, verses 4 and 5, with over 214,000 viewings. We have also posted several music videos by my own daughter, Marlena Wessels, from her CD, Win This Fight, songs she has written and performed herself. To see our music videos, please go to our main YouTube channel page. Scroll down to our multiple playlists. Arrow over to our playlist called Our Radio Shows with National Christian Authors and Music Vids. Once there, 
scroll down to the bottom of the playlist where the music videos are listed. I could go on and on, but this should be sufficient for now. Don't forget to check out our main YouTube channel, C Answers TV, which stands for Christian Answers Television, also which has over 19 playlists by topic as you scroll down our channel page.